to uh, to see different differences in between the sources. So we observed a higher digestibility of lysine, methionine, threonine, and tryptophan for the high protein distillery dry grinds with 50% and 40% of the protein compared with the experimental. So also for the experiment for, for metabolizable energy, we observe a greater values in the high protein distillery dry grinds with 50% of crude protein. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Nelson Camilo Ruiz Arias, a master's student at the University of Illinois. So Nelson, before we begin, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? So, yes, sure. Thank you, Clayton, for taking me as your guest. So as you say, I'm a master's student for the University of Illinois under the advisor of Dr. Hans Stein, an original from Colombia. So after finishing my bachelor's degree in animal science for National University of Columbia, I had the opportunity to come to USA as a cha- and a change program as a visiting scholar. And in the same place at the University of Illinois. During that time, so I I conducted an experiment with the collaboration of Dr. Sueli and Dr. Stein about the nutrition evaluation of new sources of high protein distiller dry grains from the corn ethanol industry. And last year, I started my master's degree in different topic, that is the nutritional value of full fat soybean milk in growing pigs, but it will be published soon. When it comes to raising healthy animals, you need more than the right solutions. You need the right partner who brings decades of industry expertise and a global team to put that knowledge to work for the advancement of your operation. At Fibro Animal Health Corporation, we are proud to work with you as your trusted partner. Awesome. Yeah, so I see some of the research you've been doing there has been on, or at least your latest trial has been on looking at different sources of high protein distillers grains and then comparing their digestibility and energy when fed to weanling pigs. So could you tell us a little bit about what all you've been doing there and what all you guys have seen from this research? Yeah, so as the market of ethanol industry increase the production, so the co-produce from that industry is gonna increase as well, right? Except for the last two years where the pandemic, COVID-19, so the, the cars, the, the ethanol for the cars, they, they reduce and of course the people stay at the home and. So they reduce a little bit, but the expectation for the industry is recover to positive like 56%. But they also use a new technologies in the, in the production of ethanol industry. That is thin steel as technology, fiber separation technology or food optimization technologies. And all that technologies can affect the nutritional value of, of that products or that co-products from the ethanol industry. So that was our question, what is the new nutritional value of that co-products? Gotcha. So when looking at these um, products, how did you guys set up the study and compare the different distillers grains? So we conducted two different experiments with the objective of see the, see the standardized digestibility of amino acids and the parental total tract digestibility of gross energy and the values of metabolizable energy are different amount of the three sources of corn ferment co-products from the corn ethanol industry in welding pigs. <clears throat> so for the first experiment, uh, that is a standardized digestibility of amino acids. So we use eight piglets with the cannula located in the distal ileum. And we use four by four Latin square with three diets with the different uh, high protein distillatory grinds. And we diet one diet with nitrogen-free diet as a, to calculate the endogenous losses. So for the second experiment, to determine the energy values, so we use 32 piglets and we use a block complete design to calculate the energy value with three diets with the three different co-products plus corn. And we diet with just corn as the only source of energy values. Gotcha. So with these studies that you set up then when looking at the amino acid and the energy levels, 
Um, were you guys expecting to see differences between these three different sources? And what kind of differences did you see? Yeah, we expected uh, to see different differences in between the sources. So we observed a higher digestibility of lysine, methionine, threonine, and tryptophan for the high protein distillery dry grinds with 50% and 40% of the protein compared with the experimental. So also for the experiment for, for metabolizable energy, we observed a greater values in the high protein distillery dry grinds with 50% of pr crude protein. But we didn't observe the differences between the, the experimental HPDDG compared with the other two sources. Gotcha. So when looking at these two different or these three different sources um, that you guys compared, and you saw those different levels of energy and amino acid digestibilities, um, did you guys look into why that might be the case, or what, what what is your opinion on why you might see different energy levels or different amino acid digestibility levels in these different um, distillers grain sources? So something, but we didn't expect it. That is the SID of lysine was really low for the amount of the sources compared with the training uh, SID. This, this may be happening because heat damage occurring during the process. SID of the sources, something we didn't expect is that the SID of lysine was really low amount of the sources compared with the SID of training. That may be happening because some heat damage occurred during the dry process. So the low SID of lysine could cause increasing mucin losses in the intestine, and then because the mucin is rich in treonine, it can increase the SID of treonine as well. A metabolizable energy in the different sources that we observe a lower concentration of metabolizable energy. For a parental to attract digestibility of gross energy, we observe graded values in diets that contain corn or corn and HPDDG 50% but no differences between the diets that contain corn and experimental HPDDG and HPDDG 50%. Also, we demonstrated that adding HPDDG 50%, you can increase around 125 to 160 per, 60 units of metabolizable energy in corn diets. Uh, that lower metabolizable energy in HPDDG 40%, this may be because the higher concentration of fiber that had been demonstrated that can decrease the metabolizable energy values in at least the DGS. That is the closer product like we can compare with them. Gotcha. So with that different fiber levels, um, why does one, the 40% have a different fiber level than the 50%? Is that something to do with the manufacturing process? Yes, that is correct. So the, the process to obtain the HPDDG 50% is removing the fiber. So that fiber can be added to, to the same product and then reduce the concentration of crude protein and also increase the concentration of fiber in the product that is HPDDG 40%. Gotcha. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you, Nelson, for coming on the show and sharing all your research with us. Thank you so much. I just want to say thank you to my team. That is the Torhan Sustain from Augusta Laboratory and the Anderson for funding this project. Yeah, absolutely. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.